these. So here's what we're going to do to make life a little bit easier. If we're solving an inequality, so I'm trying to think of how I want to go with this. Let's say x plus 3 times x squared. I'm going to grab this one out of the book because it's easier. Just say greater than zero. If I want to know where this thing, this this inequality, where this function is greater than zero, okay, think about what greater than zero means. That means where it's what? What's what kind of numbers are greater than zero? Positive numbers. If I think about on a graph that's above the x-axis, right? Do we all agree with that? Okay. So therefore, negative would be below the x-axis. What is the point that causes them to change from positive to negative or negative to positive? What is that called? Think about it. It starts with a z. The zeros. Okay, the x-intercepts. Do we all understand that? Right? I mean, come on. If I have this function, whatever the function may be, the zeros are where it crosses over and it changed from being negative to positive, positive to negative. We all agree with that. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make our equation, despite what that inequality starts out being, if it's greater than what, 5 or whatever it is, we're going to push everything on the same side so that we can have zero on one side. That way what I'm really looking for is the places where it's positive versus negative. Does that make sense? Because those sign changes occur at zeros. Okay? So my first step in solving, and I should say solving inequalities, my first step is to make sure one side is zero. Now this one's kind of set up nicely for us. This is an easy first example so that we can see. The second thing I want to do is I want to factor it completely if it's not already. Because the whole goal here, if I can find the zeros where it crosses the x-axis, then I can tell where it changes from negative to positive, positive to negative. So maybe I can tell all the places where it's positive. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. But the point that I want you to get is that that occurs at zeros on the x-axis. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm talking to some of you are like, yeah, that's, that makes sense. And others are like, whatever. Write the notes and be done with it. Make one side. Make one side zero. Make one side. Oh. I apologize. Because <laughs> you know, just copy it whenever I put you like, yep, yep, yep. Okay. Now. Find all zeros. Nothing new here, right? Nothing that we haven't done. We've made things equal zero, we've factored completely, and we have found zeros. This one's nice because it's already factored completely for me. What I should say is not find all zeros, find all real zeros. Okay, because imaginaries, I'm not really going to worry so much about imaginaries because I'm thinking about on the graph where it's crossing the x-axis, okay? So if I find one and it's imaginary, I'm just going to throw it away. All right, so what are my zeros here? I got x plus 3, which is negative 3. How about here? It's i. It's imaginary, right? No imaginaries. That's right. We don't want any of those. And how about this one? Positive 4, but what is special about this one? It's the squared on the outside. So the multiplicity is even or 2. What does even multiplicity tell me? Good job. 
it just touches and bounces back off, right? The sign doesn't change there, okay? So remember that because that's going to help us. So here's what we're going to do. I need to know all the places where this is positive. So we're going to make what we call a sign chart. Make sign chart. I didn't realize I had scrolled all the way down here in my room. I'll have to go to the next page. All right, here's what I want to do with a sign chart. Uh, let me go to the next page. This stinks. All right, that was step four. Make sign chart. All right, so I'm going to make this chart. Let me write my function up here so I don't lose it. X plus 3, X squared plus 1, X minus 4 squared. On this sign chart, I want to put all the zeros that I found, the real zeros. So we said it was, and put them in order, it'll help you, okay, smallest to biggest, just like a number line. So negative 3 and 4. Y'all with me? Yeah. All right. So this way, this way is going to be negative infinity if I think about a number line, and this way will be infinity, right? So what I want to determine, I know that these are places that it possibly changes signs. So I need to find the sign of the function in this interval, this interval, and this interval. Now what I mean by the sign of the function is if you plug a value in, do you get a positive number or a negative number? So pick a point. What's a point that between negative infinity and negative three? Negative three. That's the other way. Uh, Zero's the other way. Three. <laughs> That's the other way. Negative five. negative five. There we go. Negative five would work. I'm going to put it over here. Test. Now, we could go through. There's a slightly, a little bit, it would take me a little bit longer to test points in interval to get through. So I'm just going to, we're going to work through test points. I think it's the, okay, so look, negative one would be here. Negative five would be here. It's an I. It's an I, so I wouldn't. All right. Yeah. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm testing the very first. I'm testing this interval right here, okay? I'm going to use negative 5. Do I have to use negative 5? Not at all. I could use anything smaller than negative 3. I could use negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. You use negative 100 if you want to. It doesn't matter, okay? Pick a point in that interval to test. It's not going to change signs unless it crosses the x-axis, and this isn't, right? Because <clears throat> these are continuous. All right, let's plug in. What is f of negative 5? So I'm plugging in here. And you've got to watch your signs. You've got to watch your order of operations as you do this, so be very careful. Have I showed you all how to do this on the calculator? So it's like this, though. Okay. Negative 5 plus 3. Negative 5 squared plus 1. Negative 5 minus 4 squared. Remember, I just want to know, is it going to be positive or negative? Negative 5 plus 3. Negative 2. Negative 2. Times negative 5 squared positive 25 plus 1 is positive 26, right? Times negative 5 minus 4 squared is positive 81. The value itself doesn't matter. I've got a negative times a positive times a positive, which gives me what? A negative. That's all I need to know. This is negative. Y'all with me on that? All right. Pick a test point in the middle. Now, y'all said negative 1. I'd probably pick 0 here. 0 is easier for me to work with. 
But it doesn't matter. Y'all want to do zero? Yeah. Okay. F of zero. So I've got zero plus three, zero squared plus one, and zero minus four. So I've got a positive times a positive. What's negative four squared? So it's a positive. So what's happening between negative three and four? Is it positive or negative? Positive. positive. Now because I know that that four is an even multiplicity and it should be bouncing right there, then that last interval should be what? Positive. It should also be positive because it shouldn't go straight through. But let's check it and see. What value you want to use? Did somebody say five? Positive five. Does everybody in here see how we're picking the points and what we're doing? All we're looking for is we look at the zeros and we find points in the interval between the zeros to see if it's positive or negative at those values. After that, it's smooth sailing. All right. F of five. Oh, no. So five plus three. 5 squared plus 1. What's wrong? 5 minus 4. So you got 8 times 26 times, that's a positive times a positive times a positive, which is a positive. No wrong. Correct, negative three, yeah. In the middle. Mm -hmm. Yep. So because everything from here this way is going to have the same sign. Everything between these two points will have the same sign, and everything from here left will have the same sign. So if I just find one test point, okay. So now let's go back to the original equation or the original inequality. It said greater than zero. So when is this function greater than zero? Greater than zero means what? Positive. So where all is this function positive? From negative three to infinity. That's exactly right. When is it positive? When is it greater than zero? From negative three to infinity. Yes. We did all that to get this. That's right. If we graph this, you'll see the same. You'll, you should see. And if you don't, that's right. Um, what was it? X plus what? Three. Oh. All right, let's see if it happens. <laughs> There's my negative three zero, and then look at what's happening. It's bouncing off right there at the four. As what, that's exactly what we said it should do. So from negative infinity up until three, it's below the x-axis, and from three to infinity, it's above the x-axis, which is exactly what we said. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I told you I started with an easy one. The reason this one was easy, look, it was already factored for us. Uh, we're going to give, you're going to have ones that are not factored. That you're going to maybe have to, <clears throat> PRZ, to factor. All right, let's look. This is where we really bring everything together, okay? So let's do this example. All right, we'll do it together. 
So remember that first step was to factor completely. And in this case, it won't group, which is the only thing that I could that I could do here. So my only option is to PRZ, which means to find a zero, divide, and factor from there. I know. I'm sorry. So instead of listing out all the PRZs and going through that entire process, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph it on my calculator and try to find and see if I can find a good starting point to use as a zero to plug in. Do y'all remember all this? This was on your last test. 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 10x plus what, Jerome? Plus What's a good point to try? Negative Maybe negative 2? Yeah. Let's try negative 2 and see what happens. Negative 2. I gotta factor it. And because I can't factor it the way it is, I have to PRZ it. So I'm gonna divide it by a factor first and see if I can figure out. This might not be it. 12, yeah, it is. Yes, sir, Jackson. All right, Jackson, factor it for us based on what we just did. Let me do this x plus 2 first. Okay, 2x squared. Good. All right. What multiplies to 24 but adds to 11? Whew, I'm glad that factored. I was worried for a minute. Yes. Multiplies to 24 but adds to negative 11 would be negative 8 and negative 3. Bless you. You, you could technically have done the quadratic formula, but it wouldn't give it to you in factored form. But, I mean, it's okay. You're really just looking for your zeros, is what you're looking for. So if quadratic formula is your go-to, then go to it. I'm a factoring person myself. Minus 3x plus 12. All right, what can I take out of those first two? Mm -hmm. What's left? How about the second two? What's left? Factor completely. I got x plus 2. What's this look like when you factor it? Uh-huh. 2x. Keep going. Minus 3. Everybody with me so far? I'm still looking for where is this greater than zero, right? So now I need to find the actual zeros of the function. Okay. <laughs> Conveniently, those are in order already. If they weren't, you'd need to put them in order, okay? Smallest to biggest. That's going to be important because you can't get your intervals if they're not in order, okay? All right, let's make our sign chart. <laughs> All this for one problem. All this for one problem. Now, remember, if they're already factored for you whenever you start, half the work's done for you. But it's when they're not factored that you have to factor them. That's when you really get into the work. Um, especially, what if you had to PRZ it more than one time? Yuck. Oh, are we gonna have a, is that a problem like that? Yeah, probably. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, possibly. No, I won't, I, I won't give you one like that on your test or anything. It could. 
All right, let's look. I need to know smaller than negative two, between negative two and one and a half, and between one and a half and four, and then bigger than four. So I got, I got to test one, two, three, four different intervals to see. Okay. All right, give me a value easy to test that is less than negative two. Negative three. Easy enough. So I have negative 3 plus 2. I'm going to use my factored form because that's a little bit easier to plug in to see positive, negative, positive, negative. <clears throat> All right, negative 3 plus 2. So this is the equation I'm using here. 2 times negative 3 minus 3. And 3, negative 3 minus 4. Tedious is what this is, tedious. Negative 3 plus 2 mm -hmm. times 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Negative 9. <laughs> and negative 3 minus 4. Negative 7. Right. Three negatives together give you, does that give you a positive or a negative? Three, negative three minus four. So negative three plus negative four. Negative, uh, two times negative three is negative six minus three. Is is it so the biggest question here is not what's the answer if you got your sign right that's the biggest thing so is it positive or negative, negative. are you sure it's, positive. Mm. it's, it's a negative, negative. jackson's oh, right good job jackson that's that harvard math isn't it yeah harvard dropped out <laughs> All right, everybody okay on that? We're just looking for the sign. Okay. All right, give me a number in between negative two and three halves. Zero. zero, I would do zero also. Don't make your life harder than it has to be. Zero plus two. Two times zero minus three. And zero minus four. Two times negative three times negative four. I got a positive times a negative times a negative. So it's a positive. That's exactly right. Okay. Now between one and a half and four. Two. One is the other side. Boy, y'all are rough on your friends. Okay, two. <laughs> two plus two. Two times two minus three. And two minus four. So I got a positive. Come on. A positive times a positive times a negative. 2 minus 4. So it's negative. That's exactly right. If you used 5, you still should have gotten the same thing. No, 5's on the other side of 4. So you tested the end. That's okay. Keep 5. We'll do 5. Keep 5, Cameron. We'll do 5 for the last interval. And you'll already have it done. This one, we can use five for this one. Yeah. Yeah, we're not on that one. See? You're just ahead of us. That's okay. If I do the last one, if we do five, five plus two times two times five minus three. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. All right, 10 minus 3 is 7 again. 5 minus 4 is 1. I have a positive times a positive times a positive. All right, when is this function greater than 0? From, I got two different intervals. Look closely. From negative 2 to 3 over 2. And remember, in interval notation, how do I join another interval with it? You. There you go. And from 4 to... And I'm done. Word.